Joining us now from Charleston, South Carolina, Congressman Mark Sanford, who represents Charleston. Mark, good to have you on the show this morning. And Mark, our thoughts and prayers are obviously with uh, your district and the people of South Carolina. Uh, what are your thoughts this morning on this unspeakable tragedy? I think the obvious, which is everybody here at home is trying to absorb it. I got back from Washington yesterday afternoon, uh, and you know I, what, what has struck me since I've been back is one, the degree to which the community has come together, but two, the degree to which people are absolutely shocked and uh, somewhat confused by how in the world could this happen here. Mika. Well, and what are you hearing uh, from your constituents and from people on the scene? Um, I know they have prayer vigils, and I, we're having conversations, but if I can be completely transparent, we're a little bit at a loss as to how to take the conversation to the next level. This is about, as Joe mentioned, mental health. It's also about race, but we have had these conversations before. And I suspect you'll have them again. I mean, that's the, the, the tragedy of the human condition. Um, but what I, I, I believe is, you know, uh, there was a, a, a prayer vigil, for instance, last night at 7 p.m., and, and the minister, Reverend Evans, talked about the book of Job and talked about how each one of us could be part of racial reconciliation. We could be part of healing a community by little acts of kindness done one person, uh, done to one's coworker, done to somebody living down the street. I agree with you. There are very, very complex issues out there on the big three that you've just talked about. But mm. those will take time. I think where we are right now is mourning the loss of some folks that were at different levels awfully, awfully important in this community. Chuck Todd. Congressman, you just talked about racial reconciliation. A symbolic move could be something like, you know what, enough of this uh, putting the Confederate flag on any part of state property that maybe. Maybe it's time to retire that debate, trying to find compromises of how that flag still flies on, uh, on government property. Is it time to sort of bury the Confederate flag? I don't know. I mean, that's opening up Pandora's box. I mean, so what you have with the Confederate flag is a, a political compromise. And as we both know, with any political compromise, you do not have perfection. Both sides end up a little bit unhappy. So at that time, the flag was brought down off the State House, put on the State House grounds in a place of memorial, flown there. At the same time, a uh, monument to African Americans and the slaves that came over hundreds of years ago was constructed. Both sides left a little bit unhappy. And so, you know, in the wake of this, 24 hours after, say, you know, the, the, the solution here is, is moving that flag. All of a sudden, you've got some folks who, uh, who absolutely, I mean, I talked to Lonnie Randolph, for instance, who's head of the NAACP here in the state. He would tell you firsthand how much he believes that ought to take place. But if I was talking to other folks, you know, they'd say, wait a minute, my great great grandfather, you know, died in the Battle of Bull Run, and for me, it's a, a symbol of, of, of either states' rights or of the, the loss that was felt within our family. So it's a very, very complex issue within our state. Um, and I, you know, I don't think that that should be the immediate uh, solution because it's one that would take, frankly, some time. It's not going to come down immediately, would be my political take. Representative Mark Sanford, thank you very much. Thank you, Mark, for being you. with Take us. Care. And uh, our thoughts and prayers again uh, uh, in this terrible time for your district. And also our thanks to Stephanie Cutter as well. Good to have you back on the set with us. And Chuck, what is coming up this weekend on Meet the Press? Uh, we're, you know, we'll have uh, a lot on this. We'll have Jim Clyburn. Uh, got Mike Huckabee on, uh, mm. by the way. And also a very powerful story uh, comes from a, a producer uh, in the network. It's the it's prisoners who are serving time for gun violence, talking to their 18, 19 year old selves Ooh. about the lessons they learned. It's, I can't tell you how powerful this is. All I have to say is, is I hope you tune in on Sunday wow. and see it. All right, it's another way to have the gun violence conversation. Not talking about gun laws, yeah. talking about what men who made decisions early in their life now think about those decisions. All right, Chuck, we look forward to that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Coming up, a Morning Joe exclusive. He was responsible for sweeping gun control legislation as governor of Maryland. Presidential candidate Martin O'Malley is ahead. We'll be right back with much more Morning Joe.